Hello YouTube, welcome back to another video with your old Uncle Carl here at the Easy Prepping channel. And today I'm going to start what some might consider a controversial topic. I've been mulling whether to go into videos, at least doing a high overview of firearms and ammunition. And yesterday I had a relative at a family get together ask me some specifics especially about the 223 bullet. She called it the AR-15. She saw some uh, news thing where a medical doctor described how bad the 223 bullet is, or the AR-15 bullet. It's actually called the 223. Anyway, so I decided to go ahead with her recommendation also that to do some videos on just basic overview of firearms and ammunition. I come to this conclusion because I believe that you have worked hard. Your hard-earned money and your time has gone into being prepared. And I think you have the right to protect and defend your preps. In a serious SHTF, I am absolutely certain there will be what I call marauders out there that will try to take what you've got. And, as I said, you have the right to defend it. So, I plan on a series of videos, but depending on the comments I get in this one, do you think I should? This one is just a high overview of ammunition. I would do other videos on shotgun ammunition, uh, types of handguns, long guns, shotguns, and it would be a series of videos. So let me know if you approve, if you think I should uh, proceed with that. Also, I'll go ahead and ask now, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Click that likes, thumbs up button. Well, you can wait till the end, see if you like the video or not. But let us proceed with uh, a short video on just ammunition. Firstly, ammunition breaks down into different groups, categories. Uh, you have center-fired versus rim-fired. You have ammo that is considered mostly handgun ammunition. Then there's other ammos that are considered more rifle ammunition. In today's world, there's been a lot more crossover. Uh, there are short rifles that fire handgun, traditionally handgun ammunition. But once again, going into details on that would be deeper diving, and today I just want to give you a basic overview. We'll start with the main difference between rim-fired and center-fired. It comes to the back of the bullet, that round part that the firing pin hits. And center-fired, the firing pin hits the center. That's where the primer is. In rim fired, if you look at the back of a 22 round, so to speak, you will have, there is no primer that you see. And the hammer, firing pin, it's the rim detonating the round. Now, briefly, this is not a bullet. This is a round of ammunition. You do not load a firearm with bullets. You load it with rounds. Uh, sometimes I'm reading a fictional book and I'll see that the author has stated in there that the character loaded the firearm with bullets. Several of these I've contacted and said, you're misstating that. They're loading it with rounds. The bullet is the thing that comes out the end of the firearm. And I, at least one wrote back to me and thanked me for the education. Another quick point. This is a magazine. It goes into a semi-automatic firearm. It is not a clip. A clip is something that a woman uses to hold her hair back. Actually, when I took the test to get a Kentucky concealed carry permit after a full one-day class, the question was on the test. What is this called? Clip was one of the possible answers. If you check that, you got it wrong. 
magazine. Now for rimfire ammunition. Uh, the three main calibers, which is the diameter of the bullet, is 0 0.17, 0 0.22, and these are called just 17 and 22. The 22 breaks down into 22 short, long, and long rifle. But 99% of what you see out there, that's this one here on top, is a 22 long rifle. This, I would guess, is probably the most produced round in the world. It's also the most versatile, as there are firearms manufactured in handgun revolver, handgun semi-automatic, rifle lever action, fire, rifle bolt action, rifle semi-automatic, every type of firearm, there is one out there that shoots the 22 long rifle. Also, I saw one study that said that the 22 long rifle, although being small and not powerful, is one of the most effective self-defense rounds. The reason being the recoil is so low, the kick when it fires is low, therefore people are more accurate with it. And in self-defense, accuracy is more important than the size of the bullet. So bear that in mind if you think about what to get. Next one above that, also rimfire that I stock, is the 22 Magnum, also called the 22 WMR. Stands for Winchester Magnum Rimfire. I had to stop and think about that one. It's a 22 on steroids. It's faster. This one's more about 1,800 feet per second when that is more long rifles, closer to around 1,200 feet per second. And the faster it's going, the more impact. You know, weight versus weight times velocity equals kinetic energy. Anyway, I'll go more into that in detail in other videos. But I also stock in half firearms in 22 Magnum. Quick note, on firearms, the caliber, what it's chambered for, will be engraved somewhere on that firearm, normally on the barrel or near the barrel, near the chamber. One that is chambered for 22 long rifle, do not put in 22 magnums. Once chambered for 22 magnum, do not put in 22 long rifle. They're just not compatible inside the firearm. And further, most pistol ammo breaks down into two categories. One is for semi-automatic uh, handguns and the other is for revolver handguns, sometimes called wheel guns. Well, the revolver part spins like a wheel. The lowest caliber that I think should ever be considered is the 380. I do not have one here because I do not own any 380 uh, handguns. The smallest I have here is probably, it's definitely the most popular today, it's the most out there. You look at any website that sells ammo or firearms, and the top handgun you see will be the 9mm semi-automatic. That's the one I have here. I don't know if you can see that. I do have some 9mm. Next up in the chain, years ago, before I bought my first handgun, semi-automatic handgun. I owned a 357, but I researched ammunition before type of hand, type of handgun, model, make model. And because the FBI and a lot of police departments, including the Louisville Police Department at the time, used 40 caliber. The diameter being 0.4 inches, which is larger than nine millimeters, more impact. Uh, in a typical handgun, semi-automatic, you will have one or two less rounds than the nine millimeter. In fact, the uh, nine millimeter gun I have that fires, I have two of the same make model 
the nine millimeter, I believe, has 16 rounds. The 40 cal has 14. So two less rounds, but more impact. Once again, I'm just giving you the information so that you could uh, be more informed. Once again, research ammo before you look at uh, firearms. That's 40 cal. The next one up is the 45 ACP. That is not, there are two different 45 rounds. The other is the long Colt, which fits in a revolver. And this is the 45 ACP. It is much shorter than, well, there's the long Colt. You can see, this is the one that goes in a revolver. This is the one that goes in a semi-automatic. This was made famous back in 1911 when uh, a firearm was developed called the 1911. And uh, it, because its stopping power was greater than a 38 Special, and it also could carry more than a revolver. Which gets us into revolver ammunition. We have the 38 Special. There, one step above it is one of my favorites, the 357 Magnum. Now, a quick note on these two calibers, a firearm that is chambered for 357 Magnum can also shoot the 38 Special, which I tend to do quite a bit. I have a Henry, I know it's a rifle that shoots a handgun round, but it's chambered for 357 Magnum. Now, just to go out and target shoot with it for fun, I'll shoot more 38 Special, simply because it's less expensive. And, uh, well, save my 357 Magnums more for uh, self-defense type situations. And as I previously mentioned, the largest revolver round that I have here is the 45 Long Colt. Quick note on the 45 Long Colt is our uh, friend Alec is very familiar with the 45 Long Colt, is that is the one that he used to shoot a person on the set of a movie. We all know that story. I'm sure it was an accident. The only thing that bugs me about it is I have that firearm, that an exact version of it, except mine is chambered in 357 Magnum. The one he had is chambered in 45 Long Colt. Other than that, they're identical. And he pulled the trigger. He's lying. Anyway. That's a whole different story. Before I go any further, starting on uh, rifle ammunition here, I'd just like to say that what I have here is the calibers that I stock. They're the ones that I have firearms for. There are hundreds, literally hundreds, of different types, sizes of rounds out there. And once again, bear in mind that the number on it is the diameter. Nine millimeter is nine millimeters. 45 ACP is 0.45 inches. Just keep that in mind. So we'll move on to rifle rounds. The first one here, of course, is probably the most famous today. It is the 223. This is the round that is fired by the military's M16, newer version called the M4. Also the one that the certain politicians love to jump up and down about. It's the AR-15, which, by the way, is not an assault rifle. It does not fire full automatic. Anyway, this is the round that is fired by that. It is called the 223. The NATO designation of this round is in millimeters. It is 5.56 by 45. 45 designating the height. Anyway, two different designations for that round. They are slightly different, but that is a deeper dive for another day. Next up, we have that I own, which, by the way, is the smallest caliber that's it's legal to hunt deer with in Indiana. It's illegal to shoot, hunt deer with a 223 in Indiana because it doesn't have enough knockdown power. Anyway, this is the 243. Therefore, 
two, four, three inches in diameter rifle round. Only had several, a couple rifles chambered in that. And next, the largest round that I personally own. There are some that are much bigger, but the 308. That is the American designation. Designation. It is 30.308 inches in diameter. And the NATO designation is 7.62 by 51 millimeters. The largest fired at my gun range would be uh, years ago. I gave my nephew a rifle called a Mosin Nagant. It's Russian. Uh, so it shoots a 7.62 by 54R. I think of this on steroids. The bullet is the same, but it's got more power to it. Anyway, that covers rifle ammunition. Well, that concludes our extremely just high overview of ammunition. But if I failed to mention at the beginning of the video, there's a saying I like that uh, a firearm with no ammunition is called a paperweight. <laughs> if you don't know what that is, look it up. But I know you've all seen the movie where the bad guy runs out of ammunition and he throws his gun at the good guy. That's because without ammunition, that's about all it's good for is throwing like a rock. Anyway, today's quote is from Bear Gills. It's G-R-Y-L-L-S. I assume I'm pronouncing that right. And that is the line between life and death is determined by what you are willing to do. Thank you for watching.